starting in October 2010, actually. And we've kind of, maybe we should do some of quick introductions, but I'll, and I'll give you an overview of what we've done so far so know we can bring you up to speed really quick. I, you guys don't have all the information that we've been passing out because if you weren't on the VIP, if you weren't in VIP mailing list, then you didn't get everything. All, you, all this is, is what we're going to work on tonight and discuss, which is fine. I'm glad you're here for that, but you don't have everything. And if you signed in, there's a sign-in sheet over there, and I can send an email, and I can send you an email of what we've accomplished to, to date. And then after we do our introductions, I usually make an agenda, but we've only had like eight to ten people, and the same eight to ten people have been coming that. You know, we had kind of haven't, uh, <laughs> you know, hadn't really needed an agenda. So I'll I'm going to start right now. Uh, I'll go this way. We'll go right to the left. I'm Todd Peets. I'm the director of Portage County Regional Planning Commission. And Peets, Peets, and Paul, E E T Z. Joe Falpini. I work at the Rugged Courier. I'm the creative, uh, creative services director. Rod Beal, I live in Streetsboro. I'm Lynn Gross, I live in Stone, common citizen that's interested in what's going on. My name's Larry Stewart, and I'm nobody special, I just live in Broomfield, actually. <laughs> okay. Debbie Stewart, citizen. Okay, great. My name's Steve uh, Beresic. Um, I'm representative of the North um, East Ohio Freedom Alliance, um, which is a a regional uh, faction of the Ohio Freedom Alliance. Okay. I'm Nancy Capps from Broomfield, and just a citizen who's concerned um, about what's going on. Okay. Nancy Brown, I live in Broomfield. Okay. I'm Roxanne Lyle. I was part of this when it started, and um, was a member of the uh, group Leadership Portage County that launched this, pro this project, and um, I work in Ravenna. Just a person, too. <clears throat> uh, I'm Claudia James from Portage County Regional Planning. I do GIS and help with the planning. Debbie Durkee, live in Edinburgh Township. Ed Durkee, live in Edinburgh Township. I'm also a board member of the uh, Haymaker Farm Market. Mm -hmm. I'm Kirsten Peets, I'm from the Edinburgh Okay, so, well, welcome, everybody. It was always good to have new people. I knew that we, we had coordinated our mailing list to the uh, NEOSCC, if that's where you got your information from, and if it's in the record courier, they, Joe, didn't tell us that they were they were going to announce our meeting in here. We, we've kind of just been we going along. We have about 130 people on our mailing list. Um, we probably this room has been full before, and I think people are starting to wear down. I mean, it's been a long, you know, a lot of a lot of meetings. So. Um, and I'll just take you all the way back. It's, it's, again, this is a very informal, you know, it's all about trying to make our county better, you know, looking at different things. And it's all we're trying to strive to do. Um, uh, should I go all the way back? I guess I can go all the way back. We started out in Leadership Portage County in the class of 2010, and we went around and saw all these different um, things happening in Portage County. And, you know, every time we met somebody to tell us about either social services or housing or business day or whatever they always say they're from the best class ever and but we in 2010 we thought well there's a lot of needs in Portage County and um, one of the things we thought well if we have all these best classes ever you know all these people that participate in the, in the program leadership Portage County I don't know if you guys are familiar with that it's a, it's a good thing it's kind of an educational um, community aspect you know it's a combination of learning by your community and networking and and again, they're trying to also better the county in your own way, and it leaves it up to each class to come up with a class project. Our original class project was to mentor ch children, which we do. We put, spent some money and, and paid for some uh, opportunities for books and things like that for kids. But the second thing, we did a critical issues list, and we wrote on all these different critical issues in Portage County. There was probably like 50 of them, and then we voted as a class, and the top three things came up. It was that we don't have a countywide business plan, we don't have a countywide comprehensive plan, we don't even have a countywide vision. And we've never, and just to, you know, so you know, we've never had a countywide master plan or, or, or comprehensive plan. And we thought, well, maybe that's what we should be working towards, is working towards, you know, developing a master plan um, that could, you know, help guide all the different communities. Several of the communities don't have vision, most of the, I should say most communities in Portage County don't have a vision. And many have master plans, but they don't keep up with them. And it's kind of, they get kind of stale and stuff like that, where they, they, they do them, everybody pats each other on the back, and they put them on the shelf, and then 10 years later, like, hey, we, we probably should update these things. 
So you know, we need to have your master plan as a living document. So we started out with the idea that this wasn't going to be a regional, you know, because I'm with regional planning, I've done master plans, I've done visions in the past, but this wasn't going to be a, region, a regional planning commission project. It's kind of <coughs> evolving, it's evolved from the beginning, so I'll tell you how that's evolved for those who haven't been able to participate. Um, we started out with the idea of creating seven different categories or groups. Um, there was the there was the um, land use and community development you know committee. We had a housing committee. We had a social services committee. We had a, a community facilities committee, which is police, fire, uh, schools, uh, libraries. We had a infrastructure, which was uh, both transportation and water and sewer and things like that. Um, we had an environmental and. That was connected to something else. Uh, no, we had a really promotion committee. We had environmental parks and natural resources, uh, parks and, natural resources and, and environment. So we started out doing that, and we asked everybody to, to kind of put their ideas together and you know create an objective and create the um, you know, a goal statement and some objectives to go with that. And as and they all did, and we all did that. But the process was slow and tedious. The groups weren't meeting as often as they probably needed to. And so as things seemed to be winding down in a way, we said let's pick this back up. And um, we will take with the work that's been done so far, and we will organize it. Instead of doing a county, we were, the other idea was to do the vision and the comp plan simultaneously. What we decided to do is just do the vision and see if we can not find grant money out there to help fund the comp plan portion. The vision is like kind of like the, the, big, the, the, the big statements. The comp plan would have more of the, the written detail. Uh, the the uh, where, where are we not right now? What, you know, um, how many acres of wetlands? How many parks do we have? You know, um, how much well, how much businesses do we have? You know, just, just kind of like set the, the benchmark, and then our in the comp plan we would say we'd like to see this many this amount of parks. We'd like to preserve this much wetlands and floodplains and stuff like that in the, in the future, and have something that we could you know look back at and set goals and also develop the costs involved with that because you know none of this stuff is free. We have to figure out ways to, to, to fund it, and then also the comprehensive plan is a, a 25 to 30 year document. Um, the vision statement, um, by going back to the vision statement and the comp plan, um, one of the things that I should share with you too is the idea wasn't to um, supersede any of the local communities' authorities. The idea was every local community would still have their right to you know, determine what their community was going to be like. The idea was to have this bigger vision so that the local communities could kind of look to that and see how they're doing it, to foster collaboration among the different communities. Um, one of the things we we're hoping to, to accomplish through this process was um, <clears throat> that when a local community was see see seeking money for parks, that other communities could write letters of support and support the fact that they're trying to do that. Or whatever, or maybe it's new road, maybe it's bike lanes, or maybe whatever the function might be, um, that the communities could work together to, to achieve those things. But you would still have, the, each community would still have their own plan because we're not going to say, you know, Streetsboro or uh, Brimfield or Edinburgh, you guys need a park and you need a park right here in this location. That was never the, the goal to, to tell the communities what they needed to do. It was for them to participate and do what they felt they could do with the, their own community. Again, there's costs involved and what they could afford. So anyway, um, so what we've done over the last few months is we've been taking all those things and then just, just doing the vision based on the ideas that have already been worked on. And that's what we're going to do tonight, is um, we're working on the housing and social services um, vision statements. I, it, because you guys have given me your emails, I can get you on the list and send you out everything else that's been, been done. Um, two more things, you guys are, I don't know how crazy you think I am because you don't know me. Um, but the, the two other things I want to tell you about is we're going to be trying to apply for a grant uh, March 1st to do the comp plan. So we're, we're telling them in the grant, hey look, we got this vision basically ready to go, and all we want you to do is help to implement, you know, we want this grant to help implement a comp plan. And, you know, so we are we are trying to make that effort, we are trying to do this, so if you can, you know, help us out with this. If they don't give us the money for the comp plan, we're gonna have to find other means to, to uh, pay for that, or pursue the who, comp plan. If I could ask, who are you gonna ask for the grant? Oh, it's the grant is the, it's a local government innovation fund grant from the state. And what? It's called local government innovation fund. Local? Local Government Innovation Fund, and it's a, it's, a, it's a grant that they give for planning, and it's a grant that's supposed to be for collaboration and also to find, you know, cost-saving measures. So the idea is, you know, as part of our justification for writing the grant and to, and to do a comp plan, we also show how, how is doing a comp plan for the county going to save us all money, 
and help, and help promote our community. So that's something that we have to determine how much money we're going to be saving and, and the efficiencies that may come from that um, to determine. Um, the other thing that I said that you might think I'm crazy for and all that is, is again, we mentioned earlier that the uh, traditionally account plans sometimes are utilized you know, frequently, but in most cases they're set on the shelf and everybody's like, oh, we should have, I wish we would have done these things. You know, they pick it up five years after they finish it. I wish we would have done these things, and they, did, they, they didn't. Now we got to update our plan, and you know, we update our plan, is it just going to sit on the shelf again? And the one thing, and I'm going to maybe get on a soapbox a little bit too, but you know, one thing about our, you know, about Portage County is the fact that you know, all the communities have something good that they're doing. Everybody's doing good, and good to great things, and we don't usually, you know, as a county, we don't share that information with one another. So what we wanted to do originally, and so even that's kind of evolved and still, still pending, is we want to have a meeting where we. Um, an annual meeting to talk about the successes. What have we accomplished in this grant? What have we What have we done with this comprehensive plan? I mean, how, how, are, how are we doing? And then also, things change. You know, the technologies change, expectations change, um, new circumstances in our community, maybe a changing economic climate. You know, the, and now we have, you know, three years ago, we didn't have, know, even know what Utica shale fracking was, now we do, you know, something like that could be another thing we could adjust. So, we wanted to have an annual meeting where we discuss this thing. But then, you know, what I wanted to do, and this is part where you might think I'm crazy, is I think we should do it more, have more fun with that, because that might still be a stale, boring meeting. Is have, to have more fun with that is to actually um, create a nominating committee, create uh, categories, um, let the public know mid-year mid this year as what those categories are. Maybe it's the best teacher, maybe it's the best business, or maybe it's the best citizen. I don't know. We haven't decided what those categories are. I have talked to uh, several people who are, you know, pretty familiar with the county and, and have a lot of resources and, and folks that they know to help generate this, these categories. But what we would do is we, we provide those uh, nominations out, you know, those, those categories out, and then have people can nominate through the end of this year. And then at the end of this year, we take those names and categories and we put them on, online for people to vote on from basically mid-January to probably the middle of February. And then probably at the end of March, have like a community awards day. And a community awards day would be similar to how you would have, and we're going grandiose here, folks. Um, you know, similar to what you would see like at the Oscars, you know, where you actually have people read nominations and you have the red carpet, we can take pictures, and we just make it a, just a lot of fun. And there's no, there's really no losers in this at all. It's only about, you know, recognizing what great things people are doing and, and giving them some recognition for that. And so that we thought by doing, having this type of function, and then intermix the things we've accomplished in our in our comp plan would help you know be a help be a great uh, forum for that. So that's all to be determined, but we think we can get that accomplished. It's going to be interesting to see how that turns out. But I think it would make it more fun. Nobody really ever does that. You know, you see all the actors and actresses and singers and all that get these awards. And you're sort of thinking those people are doing you know sure that's wonderful and stuff like that. But there's great things going on in our communities, and why aren't we celebrating those folks instead? You know, so that's kind of what we're doing with that. So, I just dumped all that information out on you in, in 10, 15 minutes. And so, if you have any questions or comments before we get started, I'd like to hear them. Glad to hear them, anyway. Yeah, I got it. I wanted to make sure, because I can only record 15 minutes at a time. But what I'm going to explain, um, I held an elected position in the village of Hiram for nine years. And about 10 years ago, Lynn Erickson, I believe was her name, from Forge County Regional Planning and Development, came to hire them and they started holding monthly meetings in the basement of the church, okay? And uh, what they, they said basically, they wanted to do exactly what you're explaining, pretty much. And um, so they, they started asking the people that attended the meetings, they wanted their input, you know. And, you know, people talked about, you know, we want a bike trail here, or we wanted the, the downtown district to be here, or whatever, and they started keeping track, you know, writing down these ideas, and then the next month they'd come back and say, well, this probably isn't going to work, and this probably isn't going to work, this might work, or whatever, but the people thought that they were participating in this, you know, they felt like they were really, their ideas might be used, but um, after about a year's worth of these meetings, they came up with a comp plan, which is called the Hiram Comprehensive Plan, and uh, for some odd reason, um, 
it, it was necessary that uh, the township trustees and the this hiring village council agreed to adopt this plan and for some odd reason the college was also figured in now if it was to be a tiebreaker i don't know i don't know why unelected officials would have any say you know whether or not we adopt this comprehensive plan which eventually they ended up adopting and what it was was a I called it a home a homeowners association on steroids. It was a book this thick with all kinds of noxious weed ordinances, and there were also fines and fees if you didn't you know keep your grass cut so short. I didn't understand that because we still had an operational farm in the village of Hiram at the time, and as a matter of fact, it's still there. They're using it for organic gardening. My problem was this, you know, I have no problem with the homeowners association. That's fine and dandy. If you want to live in a gated community, you want to sign on to a homeowners association, move there, sign the paper, live your life the way you want to. I did not move to Hiram and live there 19 years to have this comprehensive plan, you know, passed and then now I have to live under these restrictions, you know. So after 19 years and nine years serving on the Board of Public Affairs, at which point I had just become the chairman of the board, I opted to sell my house and move to Nelson to get away from this stuff because I did not want to live under these conditions. You know, if I did, I would have moved to a gated community and, and signed the paper. But um, the way they brought this in and then all of a sudden it's there, now I have to live under this. That wasn't my cup of tea, so I moved. Right. So, you know, but that was my option at the time. I didn't want to. I raised my kids there. My house was almost paid off. I did not want to have to move. Mm -hmm. But what the kicker was that made me move was because in this comprehensive plan with the obnoxious weed ordinances and all this stuff were maps of what they wanted to do. And the downtown area of Hiram Village, when and if it would be developed, was going to be in the woods right across the street from my house. So now rather than just being on the main road, which was fine because I was off the road, I had a nice lot, the, the downtown, if and when it developed, would be right across the street from me. So I would have to deal with that. But, you know, and, and other things that came into play with this comprehensive plan, which now if you deviate from the plan, you have to get permission from the Board of Zoning Appeals, you know, every little thing you do that's not in that plan. But the, the big kicker was the fact that they had my property listed as Hiram College Experimental. Okay, so now how did that happen? You know, now all of a sudden, just because my property butts up against Hiram Colleges, my piece of property is listed as Hiram College Experimental. Um, so I started looking into this more, you know, and... Um, what I found was a lot of these, a lot of these comprehensive plans are plans that are being derived from a document known as United Nations Agenda 21. Now, any OSCC will deny that, and they don't want to call it Agenda 21 anymore. They call it Smart Growth or Economic Development or Sustainable Development, you know. And um, that's fine. Call it whatever you want. But if you look at Agenda 21 and read the criteria of their vision, now you're using the same terminology, see? So I perceive that a lot of this stuff is being fed down to us at the local and county level, coming from people, non-governmental organizations that are perpetuating this plan, you know, to our elected officials because... Actually, they can't do much without getting the elected officials to go along. But they do that through the non-governmental organizations and unelected officials, just like the college had a say in what happened in Hiram. Yeah. You know. yeah, I, understand, well, I understand the, the you know, these concerns. I know that we aren't under Agenda 21. I mean, I, mean, I barely have to look that up when I, <laughs> when I, Please when do. I first heard it. Matter of fact, I have some papers here I'd like to pass out before I leave. And I, and I expect everyone should go home and Google Agenda 21 and read it. We had an issue when they passed the Great Lakes Water Compact, and we went to great extent. I'm, I mean, I consider myself politically hyperactive. 
But when we heard that they were going to pass the Great Lakes Water Compact, you know, Matt Dolan introduced it down at the State House. So we, I started looking into this and reading it. And, you know, we were told and led to believe that it took the governors of the eight states that bordered the Great Lakes. They had a committee of governors. And it took them five years to come up with this Great Lakes Water Compact plan. Well, that's not true. That's what they wanted us to believe. But if you look up Agenda 21, Chapter 18, it's almost verbatim to what the Great Lakes Water Compact was. So we worked diligently with then-State Senator Tim Grandell to come up with something that would protect our private property rights. Okay, well, he did. And we promoted it to beat the band. We campaigned for it. But when it got into committee down in the State House, they changed the wording, okay? So what ended up on the ballot was not what we were campaigning for. And as a matter of fact, we were worse off when the Grendel Amendment passed than we were if it wouldn't have passed because now, after they reworded it, instead of only encompassing the, the uh, land and water within the Great Lakes water basin, it, it extended to the whole state of Ohio. So now, all that stuff that's in the Great Lakes Water Compact falls under the, everybody in the, the Mississippi watershed has to deal with that as well. So, you know, there's... There's a lot to this, and if you're not aware of it, you know, I know they make it sound good. I mean, I understand your enthusiasm, and I understand why you would think this is a good thing. Because a good con man is the friendly guy. Come on, little boy, I lost my dog. Will you help me find my dog? A nice guy is the one that's going to burn you every time. And these people that are pushing this stuff are using psychological warfare, and I, I, I just want you to be aware. And the best way to do that is read as much as you can. Well, that's good advice. The, uh, the thing about, one of the things I didn't mention to the, those who are here actually thinking this was an NEO, potentially an NEO SEC meeting, was that, uh, let's talk about NEO SEC for a little bit. NEO SEC is the 12 county area. Okay, Portage County is basically in the middle of that 12 county area. However, when that grant, that grant's you know, different. That's a, a federal grant. Um, I believe HUD and Department of Transportation is involved in that one, and uh, you had to be a pay to pay to participate, okay, in the NEOSC. And Portage County, and the top six counties were like automatically in the process. The small, the smaller, and I say top, I'm talking about the population. The highest populations were automatically in the, the bottom six. Which Portage County is not in the top six as far as population goes. We're not automatically and we have to pay to be in there it's, it's sixty nine thousand dollars the county has to pay our county commissioner says well, we're not paying sixty nine thousand dollars to, to participate so what we worked out with them informally it, and obviously it must be true because you're here <laughs> so what we worked out informally was that our vision would be our component of the NEO SEC project so that what we get what we give them what we pass forward to them, they will use to help represent Portage County. My fear, and like his fear, that somebody else will be making the decisions for Portage County. Uh, my, my biggest fear was that they would say, we're coming to Portage County, which they are going to come to Portage County eventually and do a big a big shindig about what the NUSC is. Um, <clears throat> and then 50 people would show up, we'd make, you know, in that hour or two, we'd make comments about Portage County and, oh, that's Portage County, and that's all we were going to hear. So. What our goal has been is to try to get as much of this information out. Um, they basically say if we can get our information to them by May, that's why we're kind of rushing, not rushing, but we're trying to get it finished before May, that we can give them our portion, it'll, it'll count as our match, that $69,000 that they want. Well, we want the, the county won't have to pay the $69,000, they just take what we give them. And then that way we have our voice heard, and that's what we're, what we're trying to do. Two yes. things. Yes, sir. Two things. Number one, don't kid yourself. The county paid, I believe it was almost $300,000 to get some firm, some young fellow from a firm in Columbus to come up here and convince us that, that we needed this stormwater runoff utility. You know what that is. They've added that to your property tax now, and it can be fluctuated at will. But um, I attended the NEO SCC meeting in Ashtabula, and, and believe me, this is exactly what they're bringing here. This is, this is, and they don't want to call it that, the United Nations Agenda 21, 
but this is what this is. And, and, and the main concern is that this, this plan takes away our property rights, our constitutionally guaranteed property rights. Now, that's why I feel it is very important that you read up on this and understand what this is before they come. Because they, when they come, you know, they're going to they're gonna tell everybody, we want you to participate. That's the con. They want you to want to participate. So they're going to make it sound as wonderful as they can and how they're going to help you expand, you know, and, and bring whatever uh, business and industry to the area. And that's exactly what they did up there. But, of course, they're really working hard along the lake up there, NEOSCC, because that fresh water and the railroad system up there is key to, um, to help them do this. But don't kid yourself. In the end, this is communism. You know, we were given a free republic, and, and our individual liberty is what is important in a free republic. When you start talking about this kind of thing, you're talking about socialism, and, and, and if you pay attention to what they're really planning to do, you know, it's share the wealth, and that's what that is. And so please go home and read up on this. Can I ask something before we go? I apologize. What is NEO? What is that? NEO, okay, NEO SEC is the acronym. Okay, it's the alphabet soup. VIP is another al alphabet soup. Uh, NEO SEC is Northeast Ohio Sustainable Ohio. I didn't know what it I just did that because it's, it's a mouthful. No, no, that's okay. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. I just want to know what it's good for us all. Yeah, yeah. And Have you ever been to any of these meetings at all? I've been, the, I, I've been to the NEOSC meetings. I've been to a couple. NEOSC meetings. Yes. Which got $4.3 million of a federal grant. You know what, we're just here trying to talk about Portage County. I mean, that's what I'm doing and here. completely separate. This started before it's the NEOSCC. This, start, this VIP started before NEOSCC. Oh, no. I'm sorry grant. to tell you, this has been going on a lot longer than you realize. Okay, but you don't want to, do you want to participate with talking about Portage County, or you guys are going to not want to talk about that? Well, I, this is I going to affect Portage County. Uh, yes. Yes. And the city of Stowe, part of NEOSCC, was going to be done by first having the city and um, do uh, pro uh, property rights inspections of rentals. With the next intention, yes, this is part of what this gentleman is talking about. No, but I'm just saying we had an agenda for this meeting tonight that didn't include a focus on this process that you're talking about. I've been coming to meetings here for two years talking about various um, aspects of our county. I was involved with the Leadership Portage County group. We went around. We really saw that our county has some wonderful resources here, but that a lot of us don't know about them. And that there are ways that if we as a community can learn more about the other parts of our county, that the county as a whole is going to be happier and healthier and just what this gentleman has just tried to tell you is it's fancy on the top you're only seeing the top of the iceberg you're not so we're not what allowed to live in a community and want to better our community eventually because of socialism not, and communism yes eventually that is what it's leading to they have a 2040 plan they have a 2050 plan and it has to do with housing you will be living in the community you live in especially if you live in the outskirts where are we going to be living in what's known as stack and pack houses in inner cities with the elite living at one level and you living at a much level. So what are you level. here to ask us to do? I'm, I'm just... To be aware of it. some information. Yeah. All right, you need to let us go on with our meeting talking about the housing and social services committees because you're talking about a totally... No, we're you not. Know, yes, you are. No, but we want, we want you to be aware of what, okay, of well, what aware, this is. We're here to talk about these Portage County issues. Sure. Talk about the conspiracy of the NEOSSCC grant, which oh, concerns holds pretty much kind of what you're this, saying. This third statement down says, have housing that uses innovative technologies and green building standards been approved? General emergency, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I always get a phone call when oh, I'm oh. sure. <laughs> Having housing that uses innovative technologies and green building standards that improve energy efficiency and conservative resources. What the intent is, what the program this gentleman was talking is, 
They're going to come and investigate, and they're going to say, you haven't done this and this. You have. This, is, this, this was a plan in Stowe. This is a plan that's already been this instituted. Is, uh, we're in not in Stowe. Stowe is in Orange not be, County. But, but the part of the organization that you're working with is going I'm to be I'm a volunteer. I live in Portage County, and I want to make Portage County a better place. And I don't appreciate being accused of like working for the man and this crazy you know, so I don't think nobody's accusing anybody well, of anything just, what, but we can't even go on what, what you my have, you what, have given us a lot what of my point was is I, that it's something I had to go heard, home and is that, and we do right do and because I I care too and make. that's why I ran for office in Hireman right. and held my office for nine because years you want to make your and I <laughs> right but also this is I became aware of this through um, this Agenda 21 through through the comprehensive plan that was instilled in Hiram. So I recognize you. I I guess what I would just like to say is I know I think I came here because I think we all thought it was about Agenda 21 tonight. No, I understand that. So what I'm going to say is. I think if you guys want to proceed with this, you need to be asked to be put on the agenda. Sure. So that you can speak about this maybe more. Yeah. But you have given all of us a lot of information tonight. But I think they should be allowed to go ahead and get through their agenda tonight because they have been coming to these meetings and doing their work. And we'll, we'll all look it up. And, well, and if you want to come back, she doesn't want to know. You can get well, and I, I think that one of the problems in my experience in discussing this Agenda 21 business with folks is that we get accused of, of being in, complicit with the United Nations when two communities talk about even sharing snow plows or road paving machines because this is, again, part of this head towards regionalization and, and whatever. Meanwhile, we've got governments that are putting out hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy this stuff, to have it sit in garages, and, and because we only need to use it two weeks a year or one week a year. And instead of saying, oh, Kent can own it or, you know, go together and we'll loan it out or rent it to Ravenna for them to use it for their week or two a year, is that it's, it's made out to be some sort of conspiracy or some sort of step towards this Agenda 21 business. On the other hand, we also get, and I'm, and I'm going to guess, although, you know, apologize for the presumption if it's wrong, is that you want us government workers, um, leaders, to do more with less, to pay less taxes, to, do, to be more efficient. But if we're, all, if, if we're all buying the same equipment and having it all sit in the same garage because each city wants to have their own self-sustainable operation, you can't have both. We got to take advantage of some some opportunities to work together, and 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 it's not a step towards having the UN run something when Kent and Ravenna agree, or Ravenna Township and Ravenna agree to do something together. Oh, there's no problem with that. No, That's not I what I hear in Lake you. County, where I live. Really? It's oh God, no! Not have Metter and Paintsville share a road paving machine. And you know what? I'm sorry, you can't. I mean, okay, then pay taxes and buy it. That sounds like you know, people but, that are manufacturing a road paving machines and want to sell you more of them to me. I mean, I don't How do you anything. figure? Oh, I'm not saying anything wrong with road paving machines. Hey, share them. But why would somebody tell you not to share a road paving machine? That sounds kind of ludicrous. Because they believe, it's, they believe that it's... Intergovernmental it's, cooperation well, is deemed part of this eight, Agenda right. 21. I mean, um, I just showed up. I'm just... You know, and I'm, I'm not meaning to beat up on any individual. That's my frustration of, of oh, first that. of all, there's no, sure. I mean, there's no clear message, in my opinion, on yeah. Agenda 21. And, and at least in defense of, of what Todd has, you know, attempted to do here, is that, that I, don't, I don't know, you know, who's here as far as on a payroll or anything. I'm here because I'm a concerned citizen as far as what Forge County is. Um, I don't like paying taxes. I arguably, as, as far as the regular attendees of this, might be the most conservative person in the room. Amen. But uh, <laughs> the fact of the matter is is that, that in order to pay less taxes, I, I, I like to see and say, hey, Kathy, you know, this is what we can do to help people who are low income 
not be homeless and living on our streets? And, and how can we use the resources that the federal government does give to us to most effectively do that while also combating fraud so that we're not getting cheated and whatever? I don't, uh, you know, again, maybe I'm a little sensitive to it, but I don't like being portrayed as being in league with the United Nations. Well, <laughs> number, so number one, the federal talking. government doesn't <laughs> give you, <laughs> the federal government doesn't give you anything because the federal government does not produce You're right. they, anything. They contract with me to provide They take your service. tax dollars and then a certain okay. amount of it comes back to so you we're, we're, I mean, with strings attached. <laughs> I agree. I know that. On the other hand, I'm, also, I'm under contract with the federal government to do something mm -hmm. with those dollars under, the, under those terms. Mm -hmm. that, that fight is to be taken care of with your congressman, not with us. I would like to hear, just hear what you have to say on these issues. Yeah. If we can proceed with that. Well, yeah. I move that we go forward with your meeting. <laughs> you know, can I answer one real quick and, and I'll sure. be quiet? Have, my first the thing, have you ever gotten with the county commissioners on this? Yes. Yeah, I mean, are they like on board with you? They've, atten they've attended some of our meetings in the yeah. past and I, I do update them on what we're doing and they do get the emails. Yeah. Like the email that went out, that they got the yeah. doctors to send an email. Right. Well, uh, I, the reason why I say it is just because, like, if you live in a school district and you want to know what's going on at the school, you got to attend the school board meeting right. and then you have the board members, etc., and the administrators on the school. So I was just curious as if, you know, you told, like, the people in charge, so to speak, about yeah, this. That's all. Yeah, actually, you know, one of the, a couple other things that we've done is we've gone around to. Um, most, if not all, of the local governments and, and told them what we, what we were trying to do with VIP and invited them to attend. We've actually had a couple functions. We had a function last October where we invited all the elected officials, including school boards. And we had, you know, I think we had like 30 to 40 um, participate. Um, so the, they're aware. I think they would, you know, they're, they're, everybody's busy. You know, you're all busy. This is all volunteer. Uh, and it's a volunteer. I think you know there, there's no money involved in this right now. Uh, you know, nobody's getting like Fred said. We've also been at fairs the last two years and a couple other community events, yeah. like just trying to get the word out to. Yeah. We're trying to get the feedback from the community about what kind well, of community want, they want to live in. It has well, you know, I've lived in this county for 16 years, and this is the first I've ever heard of any of this. Well, we don't have a marketing budget. Well, and well, I it's okay. My kids were in 4-H. You guys like have a name you go? There. I mean, Michigan you identify Michigan yourself with? Michigan and 4-H. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We had a booth there every year. I didn't hear what you said. Visioning and 4-H. Visioning and 4-H. Oh, okay. We're just trying to work with a group of people that from different... It's like a wish list that we've generated yeah. ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Really, I might be just going with me. That's why I showed up to find out what it's okay. all about. Like I read the record courier. So, well, like, like I said, I got your. Uh, if, you, if you signed up, your, I can send you the email, the entire document. So this is just, I just, it's the same paper. I only printed out what we were going to discuss tonight. So that's why I'm uh, not telling people how to how they could cut their grass or who's going to live where and all that kind of stuff. It's really, it's really meant for guidance. Like I said earlier, that the local governments can uh, aspire to or, or want to participate in. At their choice. So if they don't, if, they, if there's something like, for example, I use another example for you. You know, Kent and Paris Township. You know, Paris Township does not want to be Kent, and Kent does not want to be Paris Township. So there's different th levels of development that people want to have. And there, and there's another example of what I'm trying to say is we're not telling anybody that they have to match up to be anywhere, and we're not saying we're. We definitely, you know, I know for for sure. In my job, that each community has its own personality, and they love their personalities, and we don't want to change their personalities. So it's up to them to decide what of these concepts, these vision ideas, and then later in a comp plan, what they want to um, implement or not. I mean, they, they don't have to implement it; they don't want to. So it's all it's up to them. But the, you know, the, again, the, there's a collaboration aspect of the, where the value really is, and so hopefully we can get you know folks to collaborate. And the idea there is, again, like Fred said, to save money, save on resources, stretch our tax dollars. You know, it's not about becoming communistic or socialistic. So that's my, that's my personal comment on that. But we can go on and, and talk about this. These are actually relatively um, straightforward. Um, these are two different, uh, you know, one is housing, one social services. Uh, housing is, is just housing we all live in. It's housing for people with disabilities. It's housing for people in need or maybe homeless who need housing. It's housing for people who you know just can't afford to live. It's also housing 
that you know may help improve our quality of life, you know, and, and create opportunities. So the very first, the very first thing, what we've been doing in the past too is we just read each line and ask if that makes sense. If there's any comments people want to add to it or change it or say this doesn't make sense for Portage County, we make those changes and or delete them or add things if we don't think we covered them. I'm not sorry, I just noticed in the fourth one down like two got put into one, so I don't know what it says. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I see what happened. Cre create initiatives to improve the existing housing stock, stock, and then develop yeah. younger. Okay. Good, good job. Well, there you go. See, <laughs> and, and I wanted to point out that there's nobody in this here is perfect, so <laughs> so we, we do our best, the best we can. Um, so. No, that's okay. All right. So the first one is that enhance collaboration, expand partnerships for housing initiatives in Portage County, and though and, and collaborate, collaboration and expand partnerships, you know we currently have a Portage County Housing Services Council, and that's a number of different agencies. Fred, myself, Kathy, we're all on that board. Um, there's probably another ten different agencies represented on that, and we sit and we talk about housing issues. So that's related to some of that. Improve, so I don't know if there's any comments on that or any questions about that. But that, that, that Housing Services Council has been in existence for a long time. Improve access to housing for people with disabilities in vulnerable populations. And that, I think vulnerable populations could uh, also include the homeless. Is there any comments on that? Um, I think that we're, we're working on a lot more um, uh, effort to, to expand that. One of the things that we're contemplating, me and a couple other folks here in Portage County, that what we run into is that if you wanted to build, let's say an apartment building for persons with developmental disability, and just have it for them with the opportunity of having like a community room that they could come and watch movies and socialize, and, and since they're not terribly good <clears throat> at cooking for themselves, you know, they need that assistance having even like a, a, a community dining room. And we, me and a couple other folks to, toured Stowe Glen as one example of where they used some of the vacancy they've had for seniors to have a, a small program for persons with developmental disabilities. But one of the problems is, is that Medicaid won't offer services to help them cook or clean or anything if there's more, if there's too many people with developmental disabilities in one apartment complex because it's considered segregation and considered um, crowding them in. One of the things that, that we want to look at is to see if there's any opportunity to allow for building for persons with developmental disabilities like there is for the opportunity to build mental health housing like Coleman Professional Services that has a handful of projects of their own that are just for persons with mental illness um, and seeing if we can either expand that without being accused of being discrimination or whatever um, because these are folks that have unique needs and that don't do well if you just move them into a regular apartment um, especially one that they can afford on their own income which is typically $600 a month. Yeah, disability income, so $600 to $800 a month, and then, you know, move them into a fairly rugged neighborhood and say, oh, you're independent, you know, good luck to you. Um, but, yeah, they have housing independence. What homes do we have here that are run by the mental health? I'm sorry? Do we have real types? Do we have a number of, uh, excellent number of group homes? Group, but, yeah. I don't know how many group homes, but this would be independent apartments for people who don't need to be in group homes, but shouldn't, you know, be left to live with mom and dad till mom and dad pass away. Yeah, and and one of the barriers that we have is that if I were to build or purchase something like that, only 10% of the residents could get help with the stuff that, you know, if they moved independently into just a random apartment, they could get help under Medicaid, but if they all live in the same apartment building, then they can't. And, no. and so I can't, I'm improving access apparently by not building housing, is what, <laughs> what I've been told by the state. And, and, and so one of the things we're exploring is, is whether we can get some sort of carve out to be able to do something like that. 
And then secondly is um, also the viability of whether you know that would be a project that again can be self-sustaining because our dream would be at least at a certain level is that, that yes at 30 percent of their income the rent typically that they can afford to pay is in the ballpark of 200 bucks a month and there's no landlord alive who can run a project and keep it feasible at 200 dollars a month per apartment um, that being said, so you know, we we would be looking at a subsidized apartment complex or building, um, but with folks that are never going to be able to work and be self self sufficient. With the idea of um, how can we make that kind of project work? Because they have them in Medina. They have, like I said, Stoneland has a as a private public kind of partnership that type of thing. What if I added at the end of number two then, including self sustaining independent living apartments? That would be good. <laughs> I mean, especially with the, where the area, um, you know, my particular interest is, is with persons with disabilities. Um, because by, by definition, you know, they're typically not going to be able to earn enough to, if you're disabled, you typically by definition are not able to earn enough to be able to afford your own place. I think so. you do have to qualify mental or physical handicapped, et cetera. Mm -hmm. You know, because Otherwise, it's just gonna, you know, they're gonna just look at it as independent living, but not have connotation. And your connotation is very, very viable because we have done away with what we had like that. We had that at one time. We had places where people could go and they could live as normal life as possible. They had, and they had facilities that they could, you know, they would get transportation for a group of them from the same area to take them to work job sites and things like that because they could perform functions. Mm -hmm. But now what the government has done in the last 30 years is to eliminate that and eliminate the subsidy to take care of people like that. So you're looking to go back to that situation. Well, I guess we're looking to find a way to, that we can help. And I, I'm, I'm saying through. it's a positive. I'm not saying it's in a negative no. accent. I'm, I'm telling you, it's a, I'm telling you, you're in a positive aspect. Yeah. Well, and, and, and I think that's sort of. Yes, there is, and it has been for a long time. Yep. Well, we, we also have a lot of programs that do address that too. I mean, uh, yeah, and I think I think the, county has a lot of good houses. So. And I think what's what's what you if you're not in the housing industry, what happens <laughs> is there's a you know, Fred, you can correct me because I'm sure I'm not saying this saying this. Completely correctly, but you know, in, in many ways, they put a lot of disabled people in the same facilities, and then that building or place would be known as where the handicapped people live. And the idea was that handicapped people should have the right and opportunity to live anywhere in their communities that they want. So they discourage, you know, putting a lot of handicapped disabled people in the same place. So they want them dispersed into the community so that everybody has the opportunity. However, there are benefits for having, you know, because sharing the because they do have similar needs and they and they do they would benefit from sharing of those resources. So well, and I think Todd, there's a as you're right, is that it, it is in a sense a bit of a step back in the sense of having segregated or special use, mm -hmm. but with the design of these are folks who have unique needs that that I don't have. And, and it becomes cost effective if I have 50 in one place to have someone who can work on physical therapy or whatever else, as opposed to if there's two, which then you know you can't have a uh, have a worker or somebody there. Um, it can be cost effective. But the 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 point of it is is that you know we also I don't want to reduce any of the emphasis that a, if a landlord were to say to someone, I'm not going to rent to you because you're mentally retarded. No, that's, that's wrong. If they can afford the rent right. and they can follow a lease and, and, and what have you, there's no legal basis, there should be no legal basis to reject that person. They can follow a lease, they can, they can pay the rent. But, you know, by offering an, another choice, which is, hey, you know what, and I, I'll pick on one of mine, um, I don't want to live in Athena Gardens or I don't want my, you know, 18-year-old developmentally disabled son to move into Athena Gardens because I'm a little worried about the neighborhood or, or the neighbors that they would have. And not to say that, that just because someone with developmental disabilities is necessarily a saint either, but at least they're you know, not operating at a disadvantage of, of, of IQ and, and physical and mental dis, uh, abilities. And you're also looking at the age community that comes along, you know, that are on disabilities that you know, they may not be 
60 or 70 years old are qualified for that. And when, when you look at that, you're looking at transportation. I, I met a lady that was like waiting an hour and a half for the transportation bus because who knows where it was and how many clients it had to pick up and how many different locations and you could make this much more accessible that multiple people and you know somebody would be sitting there an hour and a half and spending three hours of the day which yeah we can all just say well you don't have much to do but that's not the point you know it is not a custom position to pardon that's not even true i mean yeah but you know i mean an hour and a half to two hours just waiting when you know you can compact too and, and you're looking at transportation, and that's a big mm -hmm. issue. This is that's a big issue in the whole thing, the whole picture. Okay. Which so, is why collaboration is really important because there's a lot of well, there's a lot we can do with that too. Let's move on to the third one. You know, having having housing housing that util, uses I could say utilizing innovative technologies and green building standards that improve energy efficiency and conservation. This idea here is really more about bringing the cost ultimately bring the cost of heating and cooling a home down and making it more efficient from that standpoint. Um, and that's through innovative technologies. I'm not saying I'm promoting the green technologies that, you know, that some people are against because of, you know, of, of, you know they, they feel it's a, a push. What I'm saying is that we should allow for new housing to uh, you know, you know, accommodate for that. We actually had passed a uh, solar wind and uh, a solar, you know, solar panel slash wind ordinance um, that any community in Portage County, I don't know if Edinburgh passed that one or not. I think they did. I think Edinburgh did. Um, but the, you know, for the most part, the, the problem is solar wind, or solar, I keep saying solar wind, we did do both at the same time. Wind towers typically have to be 50 to 100 feet high to catch the wind to make them spin enough to, to generate the energy they needed. So we had to talk about the height because that's higher than most heights in the township would allow. And then the other thing is, you know, if the community felt that this was a valuable Opportunity, you know, for the community to generate energy and stuff like that, that you could actually create, a, you know, a, a wind generator or multiple units that could service the entire community, you know, the entire subdivision. Um, then they should maybe get a density bonus for that kind of thing. And a couple, of, only a couple of communities said that was a, a, a good idea. Most of them said no, no. <laughs> and we also, you know, talked about wind. You know, um, on, you could actually mount a three to five kilowatt generator on your house, which you know, you could be a spin or be a vertical kind of. Spin. I haven't talked to the fellow, but he's got a mount on his garage, and it's a bigger, probably, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 feet diameter, yeah. and it spins, and I don't know how much, but I can't imagine he doesn't run his whole house on that. Yeah, and so that's where the innovative technology slash green building stuff, that, that's an example. I'm just trying to show you what an example is. Yeah. And then to how do you promote that? Well, you can give a density, and I just mentioned the density bonus is a way to <coughs> promote that. The communities, again, you know, they were, it's up to them to decide whether or not that was a good thing or a bad thing. And some, like I said, some communities, like one or two said, okay, we'll do that. And other communities were silent on that, so they didn't want to promote that. So I don't know if anybody else has any comments on that. When you talk, have housing, you're just talking about housing in general, in general for anybody, yeah, just everybody, not about yeah. disability. It, 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 both no, this is just Okay. Well, I think, Todd, that that's an area that the information on the, the <clears throat> value of that, of those technologies, because I, I know that, you know, some are very costly up front and may have little or no payback on, um, yeah. Yeah. that you, re you recoup your investment, which, again, is, and, and if it's right for the individual property, right. hopefully they do that type of analysis and say, hey, you know what, if I fork out a $100,000 investment, I'm going to make it back in five years as opposed to and again and again you know with what we're this is the vision and this is up to the community to say yeah we want to encourage this i'm not i'm not suggesting we require it i think oh no i think it always should be just encouraged mm -hmm. you know uh, maybe maybe you know in the future somebody else wants to say it's required but i'm not recommending that the other thing too that you know a lot of times people say well wind turbine a 50 50 kilowatt wind turbine is like twenty five thousand dollars and at the current rate of electricity it'll take me 27 30 years to recoup that money and then I have to maintain it annually and yet throw that on top and now add another five to five years on to the life of it. But you know, I can pull my cell phone up and you know 15 years ago these cell phones were like, you know, how much were they? They were super, super expensive and now everybody has one. And so I think I, I foresee that that could also happen with solar and wind power, that the prices eventually as more people demand them or want them, that that price will come down to a, part, to a point where it'll be affordable and actually make sense. 
but I don't have, I wish my crystal ball worked better, um, but I don't really don't know when that might be, you know what I mean? I no, just really that line, gosh, there, there's so much you can talk about and think about having housed the innovative technologies. I mean, that's an endless possibility. I mean, when we used to live out in the country, we used to heat our house, burning wood. Mm -hmm. We hooked something up, whatever, whatever, got the air flowing through, and unless it was 25 degrees outside and the wind was blowing pretty good, the furnace would never come on. Yeah. We were burning wood, but still, I mean, that's just one example of what you can do. Yeah, now see that, and, and so you guys understand that this is a pretty broad statement. Visions are supposed to be pretty broad. When we go to the comp plan, we would take this and we would break it out into things like that wood, wood burning and solar and, and you know, many other things, actually. There's different roofing materials, there's insulation materials, things like that. There's geothermal yeah. in this area that you could be utilized. So, so <clears throat> there's a lot of, so you break it down further and discuss each one individually um, and, and give a lot more context to it. Are so. you familiar with smart neighbors? Yeah, where they can just, are those the ones where they, they set, they preset your, like, and during the day when you're yeah, gone, they go down. and even the, your computers yeah. and everything. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of a technology nerd, kind of, I'm just sort of technology, what's the word I'm trying to say? Nerd with an opposite, 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 because I'm always worried about, you know, well, what does that really mean and what is it really doing? But anyway, that's can, just me. <laughs> can we call you Sheldon on the Big Bang? <laughs> yeah, you can call me Sheldon. Uh, there's, there's, there's also the external component to that, too. Uh, water retention communities focusing on water retention through through rain gardens and mm -hmm. other components to, to rain reduce. barrels and stuff, too. Yeah. Bioswales. Um, yeah. um, communities of swales, yeah. You know, Cluster housing, green space, that type of thing. Right, we can do what we did in the other one, including including water conservation, bioswales, rain gardens. Green space. Green space even. Okay, the next one's a really messed up section. Um, because I add, added in it looks like well, something else. Yeah, so the, it should say, create initiatives to improve the existing housing stock, and that's it. And what that is, is, and, I, and I, we do, we have something called, the, the Portage County has a home repair, uh, it's called the Portage County Home Repair Program, and if you're a low to moderate income, um, which is an income that makes under a certain amount of money, you're eligible to, you know, have your, your roof repaired, your furnace fixed, um, things like, you know, things like that. Um, so that's an, an initiative that helps with that, but there's there's probably many other initiatives out there. <coughs> I think we all we just need to also think about volunteer. Um, there's a lot of volunteer models in the communities where they like rebuilding together. We have we have some connection to it here in Portage County, but it's much more occupied in Summit County. And, have, and yeah, there's there's ways to get at increase the, you know without waiting for federal dollars to come down. So no, we, we, I do we have, have oh, one second. No, we do have, we have, I think there's some really beautiful housing stock here in this county, and I think we just need to, there really is. No, there really is. It's very unique. Absolutely. I've seen this used in the reverse, and the reverse is improve the existing housing stock, because I have children who live in an area where the city comes around and tells them, you have to paint your house, you have to fix the cracks in your driveway, you have to do this, you have to do that. You have so many days to do it. What city is this? South Euclid. Oh, really? There are many cities that, well, I won't say many, but there are. So you can see this in the reverse of um, this not being just to help people who don't have funds or monies. Because right. my kids had to site their house, and um, they don't live in a bad neighborhood or anything, but mm -hmm. they've had neighbors who've had to replace their driveways. and. Was this just a kind of keep it cosmetically looking nice or um, something? They, it's the reverse of innovative, of improving the existing housing stock. It's the worst. They, they don't want any houses to appear not to be good. So well, you I can think, see that in the reverse. I think when, and maybe the intent is clear, but the intent was here to make sure that people have adequate or 
I think I would. I think then with that, I would say something to the effect of for people who are unable to improve their own housing, there would be some type of. Um, you tell me that there's some kind of government funds that are available to help people who, who right. replace furnaces, or whatever. And like this lady's talking about people coming into houses and saying inside the house and telling people what they have to do, that could happen. So you need to be able to say something to improve the existing housing stock for those who are who are unable to, to do it themselves. financially do it themselves instead of how about how about it's, it's the, maybe the word improve is the thing and maybe it should be create incentives to maintain the existing housing stock. That's the same thing. You know, middle class people can't afford to, to re-roof, to re-side re their house, put new windows in, to repair all the cracks, you know, to do the, the sidewalks. I know they came through my neighborhood and said, your sidewalk is off a half an inch. You were replacing this, this, and this one, including the pad on your driveway. And they went through the whole complex I lived in. On the other hand, if I was living next to someone who let their porch collapse and and eaves hang off, I agree with that. Okay, I mean I, that's I, I that's that's that. also part of this but, too. Is that is I guess where to draw the line? I think is right. where we're you and, know. And that's why I bring that up because many middle class people are now going from one job to two jobs without benefits, and they they don't even have, and they would like to probably do that. So you know you're going to have to think about the factor that it's not only someone that's on welfare, Medicare, Medicaid, you know, and stuff like that in the age. Sure. You need to look at the other people, like your your, your son, you know, I mean, uh, yeah, you know, it's great if you can take out a loan, but how many people can take out loans? And yes, we do know that people allow their properties to deteriorate over years. Sure. And you have sections of towns that, you know, that are like yeah, that. I mean, I've again. walked through my, my own, and said, oh my gosh, you know, um, you know, and I, I hear about the people that can't afford things. So, sure. it, you know, when you think about it, you cut it down to, you know, your subcategories, it's a, an item that you need to address. Sure. I think there's also some funds that I've been, my township meeting, I think there are also some funds in Portage County to demolish houses that are Unoccupied. The, the, the land bank has access to funds, have, I believe, to do that. Yeah. Have deteriorated or whatever. Yeah. And those are houses that have gone way past. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Not salvageable. But right. Like, like, are these initiatives like financial so people can <coughs> afford a well, furnace? Uh, like, is that what this is for? Uh, Some of it. Yeah, initiatives could be a little, you know, rather than limit ourselves to just one topic, we, initiatives could be a broad topic. Yeah, like, okay. somebody's roof gets blown off, so uh, they can't afford one. I, I was listening to what Kathy was saying, you know, about we need to also talk about volunteerism and public-private partnerships and things like that. Habitat as a, as a, I guess, a volunteerism kind of opportunity. So. I mean, that's that's part of improving our community is getting people to invest in it without being funded somewhere. She does so much with no money. Like we're, we're sitting here because of this. <laughs> you know, I was thinking the same thing when we about the disabilities and the vulnerable people. And you know, sometimes family and friends need to step up and try to help out to take care of some of these people. And I'm not telling people what to do, but on the same hand, if it was my son or daughter or whatever, well, you get bad. I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna help them out. My mother's old and sick. I'm gonna help them. I'm not gonna wait for somebody else to do it. Right. Um, I'm sure all the people they don't have that. They don't have that ability. Right. So that's where we've got to take care of those people. Sure. <clears throat> I just think you need to word that so that does not mean that they're gonna to come to your neighborhood and start like a half of an inch on whatever because some of it is really. Well, they, they tried to pass um, an ordinance in Salem recently, um, Salem City Council, that um, people's houses were being, um, they have an is issue with uh, illegal aliens down there working at Fresh Mark, and there's street gangs down there, and they were um, what they call tagging or vandalizing or spray painting the sides of people's fences and houses. Well, the City Council wanted to 
pass an ordinance that the people the homeowners were responsible to clean the graffiti off of their off of their property or they would be fined you know and for every day that they didn't do it and it's like you're you are um, finding the victim of a crime you know uh, that didn't make any sense. I mean, the, the the perpetrators, although they didn't know who they were because they didn't get caught, but um, I think what they eventually <coughs> leaned towards was anybody who did get caught, that was part of their sentence, was, was community service time, removing graffiti from people's houses. So therefore, then the property owner was not responsible and could be fined for something that they didn't even do, you know? <clears throat> So I, this, is, this is how I propose to rewrite it, and you guys can tell me what you think. So create initiatives for those in need to maintain the existing housing stock, including public-private partnerships and volunteerism. And I think the adding for those in need kind of state the initiatives are to help people, not to force it upon people, if that makes sense. Right. Okay, so the next one is develop programs to address the emerging needs of the, sh of the shifting economy. Um, and this came from the housing section. Section. I'm not sure. If you did. Well, I think I think what they were trying. I I have some problems with that one, but yes. uh, and, and this they're, they're just talking about. I think they were looking for the fact that some people that that, that the uh, economic environment is so volatile that some things we may not think we need right now for certain social economic groups or vulnerable populations. I think that's when I, when, when I started, that's what was supposed to bring on Saturday. Um, my <coughs> plan of it is, is just that right now the economy does whatever it's doing, it continues to do whatever it's doing, that we start opening up. So you're, you're basically like... Staying more open to who needs help. <laughs> there are people that are needing help now that didn't used to be. So it's something like at the end of that then by evaluating key indicators of uh, uh, economic distress or something like that? Yes. Okay, and the last one is have housing that is located in proximity to basic services and transportation options or opportunities. I just think that what we're, what we're looking at is when we start looking at housing development, especially for people with some of the, the have less resources than others, to be thinking about areas that have those options because. Well, yeah, as, as transportation costs increase in time or could increase in time, it would probably be helpful then. I mean, we just have that, that awareness as we're developing housing, especially like Fred yeah. talked about, I mean, to, to target populations that might need some extra support, that we need to be thinking about where our centers are, uh, those kind of supports, and the transportation. Transportation is also going to be a problem. Are you thinking more of single housing, or I mean, when you, when you think about having housing that is located? We're thinking, we're, we're just thinking of housing in general. Just housing in general. Yeah. It could be single housing. It's hard to do. There's, it's hard to do mass transit with, you know, subdivisions and things like that. It's easier to do with multifamily, but it also could, you know, uh, basic services and trans, you know, proximity and transportation could be uh, some other form of transportation too. It could, it could be the, the you know, part of has those pickups, you know, and maybe if they, if, and I think part is trying to route those a little more specific if they can, which you know, it's hard to do, but I think that that would also be something they could do. <coughs> Rhyme and developing its little ways mm -hmm. off, but it's taking all the existing resources we have. Like some people have vans here. When people book a ride, whoever has, you know, it's like get off, travel off. Or something. Yeah, I think I think I heard part of talking about yeah. that. It's 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 not it's not anywhere near. It's not ready yet. They rolled they rolled it out and talked about it, but mm -hmm. I think the county has that. 
Yeah, well, that's the part, part of it. And it's, and yeah, but they're, they're talking about actually collaborating with them. So that it, what, 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 what Fred was saying, we have less re, we have less resources, and we have to start taking whatever we have and maximizing it. I think a, a simpler explanation would, is in an example is, for example, the VA might provide transportation to wherever the VA hospital, it used to be in Brexville, I don't know where it is now, but it, if it's going from, from Ravenna to Cleveland and there's only one veteran on it, but if I have a, I don't know, a client who has a, I don't know, a court date in, in Cleveland as well, then hey, why don't we you know, hook him up with that same ride, he'll pay, you know, reimburse the VA for that seat on that van, um, but you know, kind of kill two or more birds with one stone rather than have you know, part of buses or, or other vehicles run around with nine seats and one filled. Um, it's that a great idea, know. and that, the technology part of it. Well, they, is, the te they're saying the technology is really moving there. Okay, well. That, that it's just can, getting organized. Yeah. It's, huh? it's just organized. Okay. Basically. It's in the cloud. Yeah. yeah. It's in the cloud. <laughs> sure. <laughs> But basically, ride sharing types of ideas yes, that. Yes, really at, at a much more sophisticated level. Well, you know yeah. what? Excuse me, you're talking about rides. You're not talking about housing here. This says housing that is located in proximity to well, basic services. Yeah. Who's going to move that? I just I want to go I'm into thinking. one other thing. If you read, please do read Agenda 21, because if you do read it, that is part of it. Moving the population into the towns so that we no longer have to support the suburb. So that we no longer have to have the services of the street, put in more sewers, more roads or whatever. That is their agenda to move you into the cities so that you can use bicycles and wow. uh, walk and whatever to basic services and transportation. That's all I want to say. Please read it. Um, I think you need to reword this somehow. If you're talking about having housing for people who have special needs, um, oh well, yeah, that's really if this is what yeah. you're saying, then you need to put in there have housing for people who have special <laughs> needs. This is not for the the right, general right. public. Well, maybe the general public does want to live near. Well, you know, that, that's what I was thinking. I don't know who would be in charge of building all these houses and stuff, but if you're going to have a housing development and it's close to say downtown Kent. And people want to move in, and you're not telling them they have to because they can walk back and forth or ride their bikes. That's a good thing, you know. To me, that's, that's okay. Well, but as long as they have the choice, sure. Sometimes yeah. rezoning right. can come in, and they can rezone it in such a way that there are people who choose not to do that mm -hmm. and have their property rights infringed. Right. So well, rezoning like is going to be sure, or any zoning changes <clears throat> are going to have to be seriously looked at. Well, the, they'll be under this thing. They will design green air, green areas. You used the terminology a minute ago, and I've lost it, where you no longer are allowed to build, go, whatever. And um, you will have to do what they tell you to do. So, Who's going to build these houses? This is the private sector, so the private yeah, sector it, figures it, will, it out. It will prevail. I mean, whatever. What well, we're saying is one of the things we, one of the things we envision for the community is that there will be, when we look at housing, for people who want to ride their bike as opposed to no. drive a car. If you go in Kent, I think it's option. North Manaway, where I don't know who built a number of those duplex condominiums. I'm not sure what they're called down North Manaway, by where that triangle cleaners was. Oh, yeah. I mean, they put a lot of them in there, and they're fairly nice, and people moved in. You know, they're close to downtown. They can walk to... Wherever. That was Benner's, wasn't it? Benner's put that Did they? right yeah. before the old school where they have the university hospital or whatever it is now, the old village school, right between there and the laundromat. Is that where you're talking about? Yeah, the fire triangle. Station. Yeah, the fire station, the triangle laundromat. It's, is that what you're talking it's about? It's North 43 coming in. But anyhow, my point is that they put in nice living, whatever you want to call them, housing, and, you know, that's fine with me. You want to move in, be close to downtown, hey, more power to you. You won't have to waste as much gas. Is this really right. stating the obvious, though? This is going to happen anyhow. People are going to move to, to services, so, I mean, you I don't understand so. how that's a vision. It's something yeah. that people are going to do because of their financial situations, and it's just going to happen automatically. I can see that relative to services, but it seems like for the type of public transportation we have, 
overall in Fort H County, but it's more an issue of adjusting transportation to the housing areas than it is building houses and transportation. So no, that's more of a no, transportation no, point. Yeah, I, I think it's more of a transportation. I, I think in, in the bigger cities, when we see this brownfield effort and um, funding that is being done by US EPA in areas of, of subway hubs and suburbs to be able to promote housing in areas where people can utilize transportation to get to jobs downtown. Or, or vice versa, where there it's actually a focus of the housing to the transportation. Here it's... Uh, yeah, that's actually a better well, way to look at it. Uh, I mean, this one, you know, I mean, I, we don't even have to have this one already in there. Yeah, we don't want. Yep. Then take it out. Uh, take that last But one. I agree with it from the public, or from the basic maybe, services maybe perspective. Maybe we, we got under our transportation piece, that's what yeah. we need to know. Well, housing is... is you want the continuum of, of options and, and, you know, I mean, I, I run a building that has 20 apartments and no parking spots in downtown Ravenna. So, you know, I only rent to one kind of person, person who doesn't want to have to have a car and that sort of thing because, you know, then they have to scramble for finding a place to park. Um, so we, we're, you know, we'll take anyone, but, you know, most of the folks may find out that they're not going to have a parking spot even if the, the rent is 150 bucks a month, they'll say, no thanks, I'm not interested. Um, and there's a lot of properties in downtown Ravenna, and that's where, but I, I think your point that, that you made, Kathy, is, is valid, is rather than necessarily encourage redevelopment of downtown Ravenna or downtown anywhere, is to lobby PARTA to, and, and downtown Ravenna is a bad example in this regard, but um, lobby part of saying, hey, you know what? There isn't parking, there is housing here. Um, it's the county seat. You need to have you know, more routes or, or better routes to service that area because folks need to get to the courthouses and to the, and the folks that live there don't have grocery stores, so they need to be able to get out to the Walmarts and to the grocery stores as well. So, And they've been generally flexible too as far as doing that. <coughs> It's uh, going on seven. Usually we stop at seven. Do you want to try to take on this last part here, or do you want to call it a night and reschedule it to the next meeting? Hey, it's okay with me. We can stay a little longer. Me and my wife were happy that she just retired today from work, so we're up. As long as it ain't too snowy out there. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. Well, I've got somebody milking, so I've got nowhere to go. <laughs> uh, well, we'll I can see the through. cars going by. I think the snow's going <laughs> It's stopped. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if it's stopped, but. Not at that. Okay. You don't have six inches out there. Well, social services is, a, is an, is an inter interesting one anyway. Uh, so. <laughs> You know, the first one is establish an ongoing system of assessment and identification of community needs. And I think that's already kind of in place. It just, just needs to maybe be um, maintained, maintain, formalized, to let people know where to go when they have needs. Well, you know, it's very piecemeal really this. There's, there's a lot of... Right, it needs, maybe it needs, it needs more structure, needs but, structure. but, you know, and, and more, you know, so people know who to see right. when they have a certain issue. Um, so, I don't know, is there any recommended change on that? Well, that you're reading it as uh, an assessment of um, what, where the services are. I mean, yeah. We are viewing it as is we need to have, um, and we have to have a way of identifying community needs, not people coming to us with funding vehicle type of services. Right. There's a lot of different um, surveys that have been done that have identified gaps in services and underserved populations. We just need to have some kind of cohesive. Right. Okay. You can't, um, look at, you can't look at services unless you know what the needs are. How about we say establish an ongoing cohesive system of assessment? And then I think what I just said about people trying to find out where they need to go and who to see, that would probably be the next one where we, where we have right. the that's, basic that's right. needs of people. And I added churches to that one. Um, because I think and churches, they're getting, they're getting more, they are actually more involved. Because churches do provide some services, especially for their, for their church members, but they, they provide to others, you know, they're not, they're not members as well. And I'm going to say that really that's already starting much more collaboration because.
because of the other lack of resources, people are starting to, or the services are starting to find ways to, to become more efficient and there's a lot more collaboration. And I, in the last three years that I've seen, so that's good. <clears throat> the next one is a Understanding it, that sounds more touristy than. Well, would they have been planning to attract people to Portage County? Um, I'm not sure. I don't know. I think that they were looking at people who were already coming to the Portage County to work in the Portage County You know, when I when this, like the Lions Club popped in my mind, not to say that, you know, I mean, I'm just thinking attract people by answering resources to promote socialization. Bringing people together. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's all, anything we can do to build community always results in more positive, uh, it's a more positive place to live. See, but I, I guess I would, I would suggest editing that to delete attract people to Portage County by and, and perhaps have enhanced activities and resources that promote socialization and community building. Well, I'm telling Joel, Joel Mary that he's reacted. <laughs> 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 that was Joel. Uh, that's fine. I mean, that's no, a, that's, I mean, I mean right. that, that, enhanced, enhanced, you're right. I mean, at least that's the, sense I, that's the sense I'm getting from what you, you restated here. Now, I know, you know, I don't well, know. Well, he was trying to get, Joel was trying to say it can't be all about just Yeah, I understand but that, but I, I'm thinking more of like, you know, the, the book that I haven't really read, but the title about the, the, the idea of how bowling leagues have, you know, used to be flourishing in the 50s and, you know, people bowl alone now type of thing, is that the, the Lions Clubs and Rotaries and whatever aren't nearly as prominent or important as they used to be in the 50s, 60s or whatever. and and. And that's how I'm understanding that sentence more is how can we bolster those voluntary um, organizations and activities better than, more so than how can we draw people from Akron, again, as a tourist type of thing and have a, a okay, festival like, or something. I like that I like, but. So say including volunteerism and we should yeah. add that on. Um, health clubs and swimming pools would maybe replace Bowling. Yeah, I mean, but but I think you get the idea that you know how many how many people knew their neighbors well in let's say the 1950s, and then how many know them well today. And I'll say that that number or percentage is a lot lower today. I'm and, thinking of the natatorium in Cuyahoga Falls. Mm, okay. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty. I mean, actually, the last one, I, you know, if we want to talk about this, like thing like the natatorium is to develop and encourage opportunities for both youth for young. Yes, for youth, for both youth and elderly. There, to promote We have community centers, and we, we that's that's what that's what we wanted to put something in here because we have community centers like the senior, senior center, center, right? But that really attracts people that have to come over and come. And, uh, it, we have to target population instead of just something that everybody mm -hmm. feels they need to belong to. We've got to be. We're trying to get away from targeting. I don't know why this always comes to mind when I think of Portage County, but when I think of Summit County, you think of Akron. When you think of Cuyahoga, you think of Cleveland. When you think east of here, you think of Youngstown. But 
when you think about it, Portage County is like, if you take away Kent Ravenna, we really have no big cities, right? You know, I mean, you think of the arsenal, and that's yeah, all. Yeah, I'm not saying that's bad or good, but I've always thought that, you know, we're really, you know, we don't have any big metropolis except we're sitting in it right now. Well, you've, you've hit, you've hit a, I think Joe knows yeah. where I'm going yeah. with this. You've hit the, you did hit the nail on the head, but we talked about early on was that um, with all these different, you know, you've got Cleveland, Akron, Canton, Youngstown, uh, we're, we're the we're the we're the donut hole in the middle of right. all these things. Now, do we want to be the donut hole, or do we want to be a, a hub of some sort? What I like always considering, and what I always called it, is that we're sitting smack dab middle of the devil's triangle, <laughs> and we and we're nice and rural here, and I like it that way. That's why I've stayed here. I grew up yeah. here. I've stayed here. You know, I I live. I grew up in Manaway. I raised my kids in Hiram. And because of that comprehensive plan, I got the heck out of Hiram and moved to Nelson, where it's more rural. I got Amish right next door for my neighbors. That's the way I like it, you know. And not everybody needs to like it that way. But I think you don't really need to attract people to Portage County. If, if the free market flourishes and industry grows, people will come because they'll work here. You know, I happen, I like living here. I didn't want to live in Twinsburg. But I drove back and forth to Chrysler for 30 years. And I stayed in Portage County because I like the quiet setting, sure. you know. So, so I mean, if yeah. you want to live in the city, you got cities all around us. Yeah, yeah exactly. The, the the one thing that we talk about is how we brand Portage County. What is what is the one thing that really says Portage County? Farms. Well, that's yeah, that's Portage really, that's, fair. The, the fair. Okay, so the fairs okay. and farms. Now, the east side of the county is farms. Yeah. The north, maybe a good chunk of the north side of the county is farms. But you know, the farms isn't everything about Portage County. Sure. It's kind of like it's kind of like you got the east and the east and west side of Portage County. We got a lot of colleges in Kent Portage State County. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. got Kent, yeah. you got the Medical yeah. College, Hiram yeah. College. Yeah. yeah. You know, we have the Cuyahoga River, and then you, you you mentioned before the compact where you have water going to the the, the Great Lakes Basin, and you have water going to the, the Mississippi Basin. Yeah. Um, so that splits the county in half. Um, I mean, it's just a, you know you know the farming thing, of course. Uh, it just seems like there's so many different things that represent Porch County. That Porch County isn't one thing; it's a it's a variety of things. And I think that's what makes the county so special. And that's the kind of thing that when we did this vision plan, we want to maintain <coughs> that it was it was still special. Maintain the heritage. Exactly. Sure. Exactly. Well, so. that's the scary part of that whole Agenda 21 thing. I don't quite understand why we have to go under this NEO SCC in order to develop our community. So that's my thought. You don't even well, have to go there. I'm not, you know, and I've, I've shared this with the other folks, and I'm on camera. Um, so I, I don't know what the NEOSC is, what they're trying to finally accomplish. All we know is we want, whatever they do, we want to make sure whatever they get from Portage County, the, the people of Portage County or people who want to help Portage County gets that information into their plan so that we aren't doing something that somebody from Washington, D.C. or somebody from Cleveland is tell, thinking what Portage County should be. I and mean, that's really our goal here. And that's where our goal is to try to get this done before May, so they have it, and they can't. And there's no excuses why our stuff didn't make it into their plan. So well, maybe you ought to include some things in it that say that we want to maintain our identity uh, as far as farming, as far as rural. Um, we don't want to lock ourselves into the fact that they want us to become uh, a metropolis or people move in, we need something in this plan that something well, other than housing and whatnot that states that well, we want to maintain our identity. Well, we only have to wait. Let's, let's do two more sentences and then we can finish yeah. that. Then we can finish that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the, the, the next line after the enhancing, you know, we, I kind of, okay, we finished the enhancing one. We're just going right. to slim it down a little bit. Establish local infrastructure for resource development and, dis and distribution that ensures fair and equitable response to identified needs. Pretty lengthy. What does that mean? I didn't go to the manual. Establish local industry for resource development and distribution. and distribution that ensures fair and equitable response to identified needs. Now, we're talking about, so are we going back up to the, the ongoing up, system? I, I don't remember it. You want to take it out? I'll take it out. <laughs> I think. I'm I think, sure. I, I saw, I've only went to a couple of the they, they're not here today, so they, 
And I think improve access to needed services through increased awareness of improve access through increased awareness of services. Improve access to You're reading it wrong, Todd. Wait. Well, you tell me Improve access to needed services through increased awareness awareness of services and improve system transportation. There, most, most, what, that, what we're trying to say here is a lot of social services, there's no marketing money. People aren't aware of what's out there. So the goal of this, I think that, that particular thing was to find ways to educate, educate the community on what's here. No, but but I think you're talking particularly talking about folks that have been, you know, working and, and doing their best, and then they lose their job, whatever. And now it's like, okay, I don't I don't have any idea that there is any help out there or how to access that, and so they wind up sitting in in a house with no heat or you know electricity because. Hey, you know, I've always worked and supported myself, and now when I need a hand, I don't know anything about it. Right. Yeah, we're not talking about folks who. No. Okay. No. <laughs> but we threw, we threw, they threw a transportation there because it's always a problem. Because I guess that's that was part of the access. Just, but we can take that out. Let me ask you this: Do we know exactly what their plan is that we may possibly, possibly want to be part of it? Which one? The NEOSCC, as you say, you know, you want, they want, uh, they got a deadline. They want to know if we want to actually be participate. I mean, what if we don't want to participate? What if once we understand what their plan is, that we don't necessarily want to participate? Yeah, that's the problem. We don't know what their plan is yet. Well, that's what we need to know. You know, I don't, you know and, have we rewritten the sentence? This is the last sentence that we're going to move on. So you just improve access to the. Yeah. Take a sort of access to needed service through increased awareness so and, take edu and educational um, through the increased awareness of effort, services. Effort. Take out transportation at the end. Yeah, because and education and education. Awareness of services. Sort of access to needed services through 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 increased awareness and education <coughs> efforts. Efforts. Okay. Okay. Now, with regards to any OSC, I don't know. You know, I really, they haven't finished preparing their stuff. I've, again, been vocal about my concerns about the any OSC that we're. Well, not, yet they're giving you a deadline. Well, they are giving us <laughs> a deadline because they're saying that it's starting in May, they're going to they're going to embark into their own regional visioning mm -hmm. scenario planning. Right. And so they're, they're on a timeline. Sure. <laughs> yeah, they, they are. They're on a timeline. I think they have to finish at the end of this year, uh, and that's when their their grant runs out. So they're trying to get everything done as soon as possible, and I don't and I don't want the first kind of be lost in the mix. Right. When they're doing that. But so. but if we don't know what they're doing, why would you know for sure that you well, even want to participate? And I, and you know? I may be taking a naive uh, approach to it. I almost don't care what they want the other counties to be like. Mm -hmm. I really don't care. I just want to. I just care about our county. Right. You know. And Me that's, too. That's the approach we're looking. That's the approach I'm looking at with this. You know. And right. If you if you want someone kind of wants to do something different. Let someone kind of do what they want to do, but we want we want Porsche kind of the way we want Porsche kind of to be. So, right. how many categories are there besides housing, social services? You said you're going to email. So, are there yeah, more categories? There, was, there were seven. There's there's seven. seven. Okay, there were seven I got basic this. categories, but there were some that got were doubled it. up. You know, as I mentioned, like land use and economic housing. development were doubled up. Transportation infrastructure. Okay, were I got up. parks and environment were doubled up. I missed one because I have six. I had land use, housing, social services, uh, county facility. Promotion. Did you get promotion? Yeah. No, I didn't get promotion. Promotion. Now that one's a weird one because they really didn't. We didn't. We don't have a marketing plan. <laughs> they didn't, the kind of promotion was for all those who don't know anything about VIP. They, they obviously didn't do their job <laughs> because they're they were they're supposed to promote VIP. They did a great job. They did a great job for what they had. It's just hard to get people to know. Well, they were, and they and, and how they promoted the county. We, you know, they contacted elected officials and told them about what we were doing. So they did do that, and they also did the fair, you know, with the fair project, and they also did the taste of Portage project, where they invited elected officials to come to that. Is there a budget?
budget for promoting zero. Okay. <laughs> just want to have that out there too. <laughs> we just love all the social service budget for marketing. So okay. what were you promoting at the fair? I'm just curious because oh, this was, is the first I've ever heard it. it was, I've lived here we were in the trustees years. tent. The, 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 you know, we're in a township trustees tent where the engineer also shares that mm -hmm. tent. The, the, the engineer and the trustees were gracious enough to give us one of these tables, basically. And we had a map. You know, if you, did, did anybody see us at the fair the, the no. first time? No, what fair are you talking about? The no, Randolph, Randolph, Randolph Fair. fair. Okay. Well, actually, we were at more than just the Randolph Fair. We were, we were at, at, the in 2011, we were at the park, and we were also at the Blue Fair. Yeah. So, but that, but at the Randolph Fair, we were there two years in a row, and we set up a map, and we could put a little dot on where you lived or worked, you know, in the county. If you lived outside the county, we asked you to put the dot where you traveled into or left the county to work or live. And then we asked a really short questionnaire, like, you know, maybe five or ten, five or six questions saying, you know, how long you've lived here, what do you like most about Portage County, how would you describe Portage County to, to a friend who was not from Portage County. You know, and, and the idea there, and we had like a list of rank from one to ten, the various things like roads and schools and you know different things like that, so that we can kind of get an idea how people feel about this. Oh, like we're, we're just trying to get a feel for what people, just how they saw the county. So we, we kind of started. We that. gave out a brochure about you know what we had been working and worked on at that point, and then also we asked people if they wanted to sign up. And last year we had you know, a lot of people sign up. This year we probably had just a handful of people sign up. So we're tired. You guys, I, I don't mean to get off. Did you just take it upon yourself to do this? I mean, God bless you if you did. I just was wondering. We did. We just kind of well, yeah, were let's, concerned. Let's go back. You know, back to that leadership Porters County was a part of the class project. We had. Um, we thought it was a good idea as a class. We had 25 people in our class. Um, only half of them wanted to participate in this process. You know, nobody was forcing anybody sure. to do anything. Uh -huh. And then we went and talked to the 400. We, notified 400 alumni from the past 20 years of Leadership Portage County, and out of them, uh, 80 of them said they you know, you know signed up and around our list of people we notify. So you've been doing it for some time then? Since yeah, I, we're just grinding it out. Yeah, we're grinding it out. We're slow like. Yeah. 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 yeah, it started in October 2010. Uh -huh. So, and we really didn't get going until January 2011, and uh, it's, it's been two years. It's, it's just, it's grassroots. Yeah, it was a grassroots thing. We didn't want it to be. We didn't want to, you know, leadership course kind. Didn't want to call it leadership course kind. I didn't want to call it regional planning, and we still don't call it regional planning. But because we didn't want somebody to say, "Oh, this is the kind of or, or the kind of commissioners," we didn't want them to do it either. Because yeah. then people say, "Oh, that's the kind of commission's plan," and we don't want to participate because that's their plan. We don't want to participate because the regional planning's plan. You know, yeah. so we you know we kind of let the it's grassroots nice people do it yeah. and try to assemble it. And you know, people want things done like yesterday. You know. And so as yeah. things dragged on for months, as they, <clears throat> they just had, um, you know, people start falling away, and that's what we were seeing. 